there have been constantly, throughout American history, violent incidents where there are mass shootings, mass killings. And what my emphasis would be is what sort of meaning do we place on those actions at the time? As Tim talked about in 1927, the dynamiting of a school took place because uh, the school's accountant, as I recall, uh, was not very happy with the situation with the management and uh, killed uh, this, a huge amount of school children um, all at once. Uh, but we've had examples of these throughout history. And I think what's happened recently is that we're putting on more meaning. We're trying to invest meaning into those. And this is where I would disagree with Tim, is that I think mental health is one of those. I, I think particularly um, on the last uh, school shooting, there was two discussions, two separate discussions. One was about um, do we restrict access to weapons, and the other was from a mental health perspective. It, it's become common to portray people who disagree with you politically as mentally ill in some way. After Newtown, there was some discussion about uh, the importance of the Second Amendment as a democratic right. And the interesting thing was that uh, liberals who were coming back against that and arguing against it were saying, you know, you are, that was it, they're saying you are crazy if you think that you need these arms um, to defend democracy. And not only crazy, the phrase now is batshit crazy, which is just a way of kind of shutting down discussion. So I do want us to move on to the whole issue of, of gun control and the right of American citizens to bear arms. Because I think it's not a straightforward, yes, I'm for gun control, no, I'm against it. Because, in fact, when you look at the, the debate about gun control, one of the things that strikes me is that people often support their right to, to bear arms. So 80% of people who own guns support things like background checks. I was raised in the Deep South hunting with my dad and granddad, so I know how to operate a gun. I know I've shot them many times. All, everyone in my family is a responsible gun owner, men and women, so there is my kind of caveat. Oh yeah, a couple of days before I got on a plane, the New York Times had a piece about, rally at the Alamo will call on Texans to raise their rifles high. Now this, is, this was intriguing to me because I'm, I believe in the Second Amendment. I also believe that we have, there's no reason for a law-abiding citizen to own an assault rifle. I think we can keep that in the hands of our you know, SWAT teams and our military and that would, I would be just fine with that. So I do fall into that more ambiguous uh, American who thinks there are most people who own guns in the country are responsible gun owners. There should be background checks. We don't need assault rifles. However, I do think that people have a right to own a gun. They have a right to carry it. Members of my family have conceal and carry permits and use them, um, some of whom are women who live alone in rural areas and feel they need it for protection. So there are legitimate reasons to own guns. And I, have, I was telling Tim that I've spent the last couple of days um, talking to people here at the Battle of Ideas, sort of throwing that idea out there. And if you're British, you started yelling at me, which I think is perfectly reasonable, but, but it usually started with what you were saying earlier. Are you insane? I grew up in a house with five guns at, at all times, as far as I can remember, in Canada. Basically, we had guns because we used them as tools. That's what we had guns in our house for. We didn't have guns for protection. And I'm, I'm not convinced that guns are, are particularly necessary for protection. I don't own a gun now. Uh, I don't feel I need one, and I've never been in a situation where I would have shot to death a human being. Guns for protection, I think the National Rifle Association pushes that point uh, far too hard. But, but anyway, on the cultural issue, yes, there, there is a culture of owning weapons, but I don't think that there is a gun culture in the way that it's discussed. This country had a, a culture of people owning guns. Up until 1870, any man, woman, child, or crazy person could go freely into a, a gun shop and purchase a weapon. Uh, there's a history in Britain of freedom to own weapons. Uh, don't forget that Protestants were granted the, the uh, right to bear arms um, in, at the time of the Glorious Revolution. So people forget that. There's this, this great idea that you know, it, it never comes out and in, in, uh, people forget that, that Britain actually had a gun culture, if you want to call it that, up until 1870. Uh, so I, I think what there is in the United States is a culture of freedom which I think is, is embodied in the Second Amendment and the rest of the Constitution, and I think is something to which the rest of the world should aspire. For the first time, really, in American history, guns are not tools. Guns are um, a ledger activity. 
And um, uh, I think you could argue that a large proportion of gun ownership is, is a leisure activity. In fact, there are women who are in, in really enthusiastic about guns um, and, you know, think they're really fun. You know, it's fun to shoot them and that feeling of power. And so I think, I think there, is a, there is a kind of an enthusiast culture. But the, 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 the real question of culture uh, in this discussion is the culture war. Should there be gun control of the variety which is proposed at the moment in the U.S.? The answer is no, um, for three simple reasons. First, political. It's almost impossible to do. America has a constitutional right to bear arms. Very, very, very difficult to overcome that. And that's been proven by the fact that earlier during this year, uh, the President supported a bill going through the Senate which was incredibly minor, incredibly small in its attempts to control access to guns. And he couldn't get the votes for it, even after a terrible, terrible shooting in a school. So, and you're going up against the National Rifle Association as well. This is something that's politically just simply kind of off the table. It's almost impossible to do. So politically, can't do it. Uh, second, it's impractical. Um, if you were to try and ban whole classes of guns, well, that would mean that innocent people wouldn't have access to them anymore, but boy, <coughs> criminals sure would, uh, because those guns are already out there can't get rid of them. So criminals would continue to have those guns and would continue to use them. But now you would have taken away innocent people's right to defend themselves. And Washington, D.C. is a classic example of that. It's almost impossible to get a gun in Washington, D.C. But believe me, somehow the drug dealers do. Um, so that's political reasons, practical reasons, and thirdly and finally, intellectually, uh, it's something America shouldn't do. Because, it's, because gun ownership is kind of at the center of the American tradition and the American philosophy and way of life. Um, it's about, first of all, resistance to the state. As long as people can defend themselves, arm themselves and defend themselves, they cannot be oppressed by the state. They're able to resist it. Uh, in the 1960s, a, a large number of civil rights activists were members of gun clubs. Uh, a lot of civil rights activists were members of the National Rifle Association. Why? Because they wanted to have guns in order to defend themselves against the local KKK, because it was something that the local racist police force refused to do. And also, it's not just about resistance to the state, it's also about self-reliance. If you have a gun, you don't need the local police force. You can defend your own property. It's about rugged individualism and the individualism looking after themselves and their own family. So for those reasons, practical, political, and intellectual, I just don't see this as a debate which Americans are prepared to engage in. And given their own tradition and history and culture, I don't see why they should have to. Just on the assault weapons issue, because I think that's a kind of an interesting one, because I disagree with you really about assault weapons. I think the way to think about assault weapons is that they are they're a normal deer rifle with a go faster stripe on the side of it. That's essentially what it is. It's, it's entirely cosmetic, the difference between a, a rifle and an assault rifle. Second, it's worth keeping in mind that rifles in general are responsible for in the hundreds of casualty of, of deaths per year uh, compared to the approximately 9,000 homicides that there, there are. Uh, any kind of rifle are, are responsible for a very, very tiny percentage of all of the deaths. So it's, it's I think the, the sort of attack on assault rifles kind of goes in with this whole cultural aspect. It, we're going to attack the culture because we, what everybody doesn't want is these guys that dress up in green khaki and go out at the weekend and shoot at a bunch of targets that look like Al-Qaeda or whoever. Um, that's the, the sort of attack on assault rifles and as an attack on these people. It's worth remembering that out of every weapon in the United States, uh, you know, estimates between 200 and, and 250 million, uh, we're, we're talking about less than uh, a half of 1% that are ever used in the commission of a crime. And don't forget that walking into an airport with a weapon that you've forgotten that you have is, is of course, coming into the crime, uh, coming into the realms of crime. So whatever people want to use these assault weapons or whatever for, is absolutely all right so long as they don't hurt other people with them. That's the whole point, is that you should be allowed to keep something and own it and do whatever you like with it. I mean, I, as I've written about in Spiked, I, I don't have a great understanding of people who own horses. Um, they seem to me, from the last century, uh, no longer necessary in any p potential way, not part of modern life. But, um, you know, I would allow people to, to go horse riding if they really want to because they don't hurt anybody else with it. It's similarly if somebody wants to dress up in green cocky and go into the woods and shout all sorts of things and, and, and play, play guns and, and shoot into the ground or whatever they want to do, so long as they don't hurt anybody else, I don't see that we can object to that. And, 
And I quite like that, that, that principle, that, that, that sort of J.S. Mills principle, um, so long as we don't do harm to other people, uh, it's all fine. So uh, yes, the, the assault weapons don't bother me, although I have to say if, if you, if I had to face somebody with an assault rifle and I had our deer rifle with a nice scope on it, uh, I would, I would uh, be much happier with a deer rifle to, uh, than the assault we weapon because they're not, they're not any more useful in a deer rifle and in fact with a scope on I'd have an advantage. The assault weapons ban and discussion of assault weapons is actually a, a cover for what we're really talking about here, which, was, which is an elite, a coastal elite in most cases, who think no one should have a gun because why would you need a gun? It's just like they think we should all drive a Prius. I mean, I'm sorry, it's just not going to happen, but the wish is very much there. And I, you know, let's, a huge issue in one of the recent political campaigns in the US was the fact that our current president was caught saying, these people cling to guns and religion. And by these people, he meant people like me and my family and lots, you know, half of the country. More this is that. a very polarized nation, yes. But our elite class is, which, which does have access to and more media outlets in some cases than, than the non-elite, it certainly has vast, shores of wealth, um, there is an attitude about people who would even want to own guns that is what we're getting at when we're looking at assault weapons bans and things like that. So I do think that that, that cultural point is, is important to understand and just the animosity that that created in law-abiding American citizens who've never harmed anyone with a gun, mm -hmm. to hear their president call them those people who cling to guns and religion was deeply offensive. All over America, people are really afraid to talk to their neighbors. You know, and, and you know, if you, if you follow advice forums, um, which is my guilty pleasure, you know, that you get, my neighbor's dog is shitting in the yard, should I call the police? You know, and, and or, or you know, or should I call the homeowners or is it owners association because I really want to get into help all with them, but. Just uh, shoot them. Well, <laughs> well, see, this is the, well, here's the thing, is that I think there's, I, I think there's, a, there's an element of instability. So, you know, some of the most tragic shooting incidents are this one in Louisiana where um, a Japanese exchange student dressed up for Halloween, um, got the wrong address, uh, went to a door. The man um, behind the door said, freeze. The Japanese exchange student didn't understand, and so the man shot him. You know, and it's like, well, why? You know, just, just that you can go from kind of zero to shooting someone is actually indicative of a, a bigger problem with American um, society, which uh, I actually think is is repeated at the Ameri at the level of politics, um, and and which is you know what the culture war in some ways is all about.